Born this day in 1893, Charles Atlas, Italian-American bodybuilder, model for historic statues such as Alexander Hamilton at the U.S. Treasury in Washington, D.C., and George Washington in New York's Washington Square Park. Businessman, fitness huckster, fitness guru Bernard McFadden declares Atlas the world's most perfectly developed man at an open contest at Madison Square Garden in 1922. Mostly, we remember Atlas today for a long-running series of full-page, sometimes four-color comic book and magazine advertising featuring photographic images of himself and a comic book style one-page story about a 97 pound weakling who overcomes his lack of charisma and sex appeal by gambling a three-cent stamp to send away for and employ the Charles Atlas method of dynamic tension to build muscles and sculpt the body. And today, for all our listeners out there in podcast land, a special guest, a fellow who actually knew and was himself personally inspired by Charles Atlas, a good friend of the show who lives right here in Rutland, say hello to Mr. Matu Panagopoulos. Matu. Yeah, well, <laughs> Matu, how you doing? I'm good, yeah. So, you knew Charles Atlas. Well, he lived down the block, he, uh, he and his wife and, and the kids. Yeah, but I mean, you knew him. Matu, man, you told me before the show that you and Charles Atlas were close. You were friends. Oh, yeah, th- that's right. Uh, we were close. You know, uh, that, uh, that wasn't his, his real name. When he when he when he come to this country, his name was Angelo Angelo Siciliano. So he was Italian. Yeah, man, obvious. And he didn't always look like that with that awesome body. He was a skinny little guy. He really did weigh ninety seven pounds. I mean, in those days, he was hungry all the time. You told me you worked for him. That you were a copywriter for those famous comic book ads. The comics. Yeah, I read the comics all the time. I knew the style. The first one I wrote was uh, the insult that made a man out of Mac. I wrote that. You did. What was the storyline in that one? Well, story, uh, such as it is, there's this skinny, scrawny, weak little guy with his ribs uh, sticking out, see? And he's at the beach with his girl, big, sexy brunette. And this terrifically built, good-looking guy rolls up and, you know, kicks sand in his face and just generally humiliates him. The girlfriend, uh, she's all ashamed. She just goes home alone. Later, you think, uh, well, maybe a girlfriend and this other guy hooked up, but that never happened. Wait, she didn't go out with that good-looking guy? Because we always thought... Yeah, uh, a lot of people thought something happened with them, too, but nothing happened, all right? She just goes home and uh, leaves him on a beach. Leaves him on the beach. Okay, that's the setup. Exciting. Then what happens? Well, that little punk guy goes home, and uh, this is the part that I'm most proud of. He kicks a chair. A chair? A wooden chair. Like you find on a sidewalk with a sign that says, Free, take me, with different color paint drips all over it. And you take it home, it becomes your favorite chair. Across the room, he kicks it. And then he gambles the stamp. Nobody knows why it's supposed to be such a big gamble, a three-cent stamp. Big deal, (laughs) right? Gets the Charles Atlas program in the mail. Right away, like in the next panel even, he's all super musculated. And he's uh, back at the beach the next weekend. And he kicks that big, good-looking guy's ass and takes his girl back. And she goes, Oh, Mac, you're a real man after all. It's a super happy ending day. Yes, I remember that. And the character, the scrawny guy, that was based on the young Charles Atlas story, right? No, well, uh, actually, uh, that uh, that was based on me. Oh, I always thought it was... uh... It was me. See, a lot of people think it's him, but it was me. Before, I was a brilliant physical specimen you see before you today and all buff like this here. I was a spindly skinny guy too with no skills or chops whatsoever. 92 pounds, 5 pounds less than Mr. Big Stuff Charles Atlas. A stiff wind comes along and I'm all up in the trees. And I wasn't getting anything. No girls on the beach, nothing. Pathetic. A classic story. But the next year, you improved on that first ad. In the comics, you made it even better and it uh, really came alive, didn't it? Well, I guess you could say that. In 1941, there was the insult that turned a chump into a champ. The tension is that she's drawn so incredibly sexy. And he's hardly even there, nervous, sweating, he's such a wuss. Yeah, you wonder uh, what they're doing together. Yeah, that's right. Nothing going on there. The big guy uh, shows up and actually shoves the little guy out of the frame and takes the sexy girl away. Well, he don't so much take her as she just goes off with him because he's such a better catch than Joe. And Joe goes home, but instead of kicking the chair this time around, he pounds the table. And nothing happens. In fact, he hoits his hand. And then he gambles a three-cent stamp, very important, goes to the program, becomes an Adonis in about five minutes. Then he goes back to the fair and breaks the good-looking guy's jaw. Breaks his jaw? Well, that certainly makes the point. Yeah, he really messes the guy's face up. And he walks off with two girls hanging all over him. Everybody's all cheering. What a guy. He's famous in the neighborhood. And this is way before your internet. Oh, we got back then for celebrity gossip Walter Winchell and them Navajo cold talkers. 
maybe uh, Earl Wilson in the post. Powerful. Well, I guess there's no way to top that. Well, actually, two years later, I write How Jack the Weakling Slaughtered the Dance Hall Bully. Great title. Thanks. <laughs> this time, uh, the little guy, the weakling, and his girlfriend are dancing in the ballroom on the pier. The good-looking guy's jaw is all healed up, and he bumps into Jack, like on purpose, and comments about what a puny, disgusting little toy the guy Jack is. The little guy. You're paying attention, right? Oh, yeah. And the big guy says, get this, you're not even worth scuffing my shoes, kicking your ass. Nice touch. Yeah, I thought so, too. The little guy goes back to his miserable apartment, kicks the chair, gambles a stamp, etc., and so forth. Which really raises the bar for comic book advertising. Yeah, see, before us, it was all sea monkeys, a hundred army men, a little cardboard footlock over a buck and a quarter, x-ray specs that were supposed to let you look through girls' clothing and stuff, but no way could you do that. It was just a rip-off. With dynamic tension, the Atlas program, a lot of people get into bodybuilding to get the coils. And, Matu, you really knew Charles Atlas. You aren't just putting us on with that, right? Right down the block, he lived a regular guy, wife and kids, fought motor car, potted plants in the window boxes, loved the Dodges, subscribed to Life magazine, you know, the whole ballpark. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Matu Panagopoulos. Thank you, Matu. Hey, don't mention it. The pleasure was mine. So, that's it? We're done? Yeah, that's it. Nice job. So, uh, Matu, you, uh, you never heard of him before this, did you? Yeah, sure. Some kind of boxing guy, right? No, man, it's bodybuilding. Bodybuilding. 